Hello, and welcome back to AP Economics. This is the first video of Unit 3, where we are going to be talking about different performance indicators in the market. Now, there are three main performance indicators. GDPA, GDP, unemployment, and inflation rates. We're going to get into all of these, but first we're going to start by talking about the national accounts. Now, the national accounts has four main categories. It's, ke it's a record kept by the government that focuses on keeping track of all the money spent in the U.S. economy. Now, these four factors come from four different places. Consumer spending, business investments, give me a second here, business investments, government spending, and imports and exports. The combination of these four things makes up the national account. Now these four things are also the category for our gross domestic product, which we'll be getting into in a later video. Now, in order for the national accounts to work, there has to be, you have to understand how money and resources move throughout the market. So here you see we have uh, the circular flow diagram. Now, we're just going to take a look at the basic insides of the diagram for right now, which includes the households, factor markets, firms, and the markets for goods and services. In this case, firms are considered any company that provides goods or services to the market. Households are any consumers, so it doesn't necessarily have to be your traditional like house. It can be anyone purchasing goods and services. The markets for goods and services is any place that you can buy the products or services produced by the firm. This would include everything from a grocery store to Amazon.com. Now the factor market is interesting because the factor market is where labor or the four factors or well the four factors are bought and sold which includes uh, labor land capital and entrepreneurship the four uh, resources that companies use that we talked about in, back all the way in chapter one so what happens is that households go to the market to the market for goods and services and they spend money that the firms then receive. However, the firms must then spend that money in the factor markets for wages, profits, interest, and rent on those four factors, which puts that money back in the hands of consumers so that they're able to go purchase more goods and services. Now, in this very simplistic version, it's usually referred to as the rat race because people feel like they're just working to spend money to go back to the firms. But however, you see in our expanded chart, uh, that this isn't necessarily the case. Now the expanded chart includes everything that we just had, but it includes the government, which has government transfers, which includes things like uh, social security or unemployment benefits that the government provides and the government pays for. Uh, the government also then uses taxes. So you see that all the money going into the households isn't going straight back into the market because the government's taken a little bit of it so that the government can then go and spend goods and services in the market for goods and services. Now, the, in the market for goods and services in the United States, we also have interaction with the rest of the world who are giving us the exports and imports, which you see that flow there. Now, financial markets, uh, we're gonna be talking a lot about GDP later, and financial markets actually have nothing to do with GDP. However, they are included as part of the expanded circular flow diagram because it does talk about where our money is going. So the government does receive money from the financial markets from borrowing. Uh, and then you have the foreign firms, foreign governments in the financial markets, as well as firms uh, borrowing money from the financial markets and the households providing money to the financial markets. So through both the markets for goods and services and the financial markets, you actually see households providing money to firms both ways. Uh, technically, uh, when the households give taxes to the government and then the government buys goods and services from those firms, those 
also is the household giving it money, but that's getting a little complicated. You see how quickly anything can be connected to anything else in this diagram, though. That's the point. The, our economy is super interconnected, and everything affects everything else, and everything depends on everything else. So if the government were to, say, attempt to speed up spending by lowering taxes, thus increasing the disposable income of households, consumers would begin to spend more in the markets for goods and services. As the economy begins to heat up, firms would continue producing more goods as well in order to keep up with the increasing demand from households. And because, as we learned in the last set of videos, the higher prices would lead them to want to supply more. So when they're supplying more and making more money, they're going to need more people in order to increase their opportunity curve which means they're going to be putting more money into the factor markets to get more workers and more factors in order to produce more, which is going to be going into the households. Now, it's important to remember that earlier we did talk about households as being people who bought stuff. It's also individuals who, like, own the companies, right? While the firms are technically the ones making the products, they're still paying those wages, those profits, those interests, those rents to the pe actual people who own the land, the labor, the entrepreneurship, all those factors that we talked about. So there you have it. That's national accounts and the simplified, very simplified market of how our uh, diagram of how our government and our markets work. Until next time, this is Duncan signing off with AP Economics.